the faith series in prose. As you read and practice the biblical principles set forth in this unique series, you will feel your faith muscles bulk and you will gain a Samson-like faith so that you can speak to the mountains in your life and move them out of your way. Available on Amazon and other online booksellers. Soothing Soulful Songs. Available now on Amazon. Order your copy today. Dive into the living waters of the Word of God on So Says the Lord with Sherry Hales Ministries, where we're learning, living, loving. Now here's your host, Bible teacher, minister, author, Sherry Hales. Well, welcome. Peace, love, and joy to you and your family. I'm so happy you decided to join me today on So Says the Lord with Sherry Hells Ministries, where we're learning, living, and loving. So let's dive right into the refreshing living waters of the Word of God. So today we will continue our Trichotomous Man series. And today we will look at Balaam. This is part three. So in this third teaching for our character study of Balaam, we will focus on the soul of Trichotomous Man which simply means three parts, as he is yielded to and led by a demonic or satanic nature. Our series focus scripture is found in Genesis 1 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Our series objective. In this series, we will look at God's created man. We will look at trichotomous man as spirit led, soul led, or satanically led. These leadings will be juxtaposed with the objective of gaining a clearer perspective of who we are as the children of God. And so the scripture I will look at today, I'll actually look at a few different scriptures. I'll look at Numbers 22, 31 to 38, Numbers 23. 7 to 11, Numbers 25, 1 to 3, Numbers 25, 9, and Numbers 31, 16. If you are going to join me, um, if you're going to read along with me, you can grab your Bible now. I will be reading from the King James Version. Any version you have is fine. The different translations may read a bit differently though. And also, Every um, series that we do has two separate components, the Bible teaching component followed by the Bible study component. If you are someone who wants to dive deeper into the Word of God, join us for Bible study. You would also read Matthew 16, 21 to 27. Visit my website, www.sherryhealthministries.org, and there you will find information about how to participate in the Bible study. While you're there, if this ministry is being a blessing to you, please consider sowing a seed, doesn't matter how big or small, to help us advance the Word of God. And so an overview. As we continue our character study of Balaam, we will see that Balaam's soul, which consists of the mind, the will, and the emotions, was yielded to and led by a satanic nature. Balaam practiced uh, divination. His goals and desires were self-seeking and his allegiance was to Satan. And so the scriptures again will be numbers. I'm going to start with numbers 22, 31 to 38. Numbers 22, 31 to 38. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. 
and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And uh, let's see. And so let me just continue. I said I'm going to read to 34. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass? And we know that word means donkey. These three times. Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And so, with this we can see that Balaam was frightened because of the angel. The, the angel, he did not know that it was there. And, um, and so when the Lord finally opened his eyes, um, you know, there are other passages in the Bible that, that let us know that usually when someone would see an angel, their response was, um, would usually be that of fear. And so his response um, showed that when the angel confronted him, um, he, you know, he was startled by it and he was, he was frightened by it. So Balaam was frightened because of the angel. His fear led him to express repentance. But his repentance was just words for the sake of preserving his own life. It was not heartfelt, sincere uh, repentance or contrition. And so the reason that I'm saying that is... Um, is because um, Balaam disobeyed um, what God had told him to do. Now, if you, on my website, the other teachings are there as well. So if you missed the first and second teaching on Balaam, so there was an introduction into this segment, and then there was Balaam 1, Balaam 2, and um, right now this is Balaam 3. So if you missed the others, then I would suggest going back to look at those as well if you're, you know, um, if you want to know more about about this teaching uh, and understand where I'm coming from with um, what I'm saying about Balaam. And so he did repent, but it was it was lip service, you know, similar to when someone says, you know, I'm sorry, but you know that they really don't mean it. They may say it because of anything a self-serving reason you know um, something negative will happen to them if they don't act like they are sorry this is the place where Balaam was coming from he wasn't really displaying sincere sorrow he was basically doing what he thought should be done in that moment to um so that the angel would not harm him because the angel was there to not just harm him, but to end him, to end his life. And so Balaam showed repentance to preserve himself. And um, But it wasn't sincere. It was just because of the situation that he was in. And so now I'm going to read 35 to 38. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak, and when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, or Balaam rather, Did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honor? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I came unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The Lord that the the word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And so as we um, read about Balaam or 
as we read about them and as we've been reading about Balaam, we need to remember that these things happened in the Old Testament. Under the New Testament, God interacts with his children and those that are not his children differently. But one thing we can see here that the text does reveal to us is that even those who don't belong to God and those that are wicked, they are still subject to God and God sets boundaries that they cannot cross. And so we need to understand that um, as children of God, because, you know, sometimes, you know, um, in life, you will face situations as a child of God that don't make sense they you know anything that is not for your good is um considered an enemy anything it could be anything um because those things god does not want to happen to his children and so you can look at sickness as an enemy anything that is affecting your life as a child of god in a negative way you can look at that as an enemy and so sometimes, you know, things are happening in the lives of the children of God. But the Bible assures us that God will not put more on us than we can bear. Um, it, it does not say that he won't allow things to happen that are, you know, at times unpleasant, um, difficult, uh, very stressful, you know, um, but as children of God, what we do, we're, we're, following God does not mean you're going to have a perfect life. But it does mean that um, you will have eternal life. You will have eternal life with God. And someday, the things that trouble the children of God here on this earth will be no more. Because we are, in fact, eternal beings. And so, this the things that we are dealing with here... Are temporal and the Bible even calls them calls this life but a mist it God looks at it so briefly that he says it's but a mist and so we have to become farsighted as children of God and and sometimes we're believing him for something and sometimes it may take a very long time for those things to manifest or some saints have even believed God and then passed on and, and it seemed like what they were believing him for didn't happen but we have to realize that we are, in fact, eternal beings. And so if the promise doesn't manifest on this side of glory, it will certainly manifest on the other side of glory. And we have to remember that as children of God, the things that we do for him, you know, if we don't, if it doesn't seem we're rewarded here, we will be rewarded in heaven. And so Christ died for us. And, and, and just that in and of itself is something we could not have ever done for ourselves. That's why man can't work his way to um, rightness with God. Because we can never be good enough. It doesn't matter your good deeds or what people think are good deeds. They'll never measure up. And so what Christ did for us was more than we could ever do for ourselves. And so he's already done enough. He has, but he's given us an inheritance as well. And so he wants us to believe for it. But it's not going to always be easy believing and trusting for the promises of God to manifest in our lives. But it's just something that we have to believe for as children of God and be far-sighted, knowing that if it does not manifest on this side of glory, it will certainly manifest on the other side. And so let's keep reading. Now I'm going to go to Numbers 23. And I'm going to read uh, 7 to 8. And he took up his parable and said, Balak the king of Moab hath brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come curse me, Jacob, and come defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? Now see, this goes back to what I'm just, I just said. God is not going to put more on us than we can bear. And those things that come as enemies, whether it is um, a sickness or a disease or whether it is, you know, Satan himself 
uh, stirring up people against us or, you know, um, demonic oppressions. You know, sometimes he sends uh, emotional distresses into people's hearts and minds and, and they struggle, you know. Um, but no matter what it is, there there is always a boundary that the Lord will not allow the enemy or those that work for the enemy to cross. And we have to trust God and know that his power is almighty power. You know, this earth that we live on, God created it perfect. But the corruption of man is deteriorating this very earth that we live on. And so the Bible already foretold that there was going to come a day when the heavens and earth would pass away. God's going to create a new heaven and earth. But man's corruption leads to corrosion. And so it's corroding. It's corroding um, the planet that we live on. And so, you know, men and women, they want to live um, however they choose that their brain tells them to do. Whatever they've decided feels right to them. But we are created beings and we do affect things. We don't only affect our own lives. We affect other people's lives. We affect the earth as we see that today clear more and more clearly we see yes we are actually affecting the earth cumulatively we are affecting the earth and so cumulatively we are affecting one another and when God says don't do something it's for a reason we don't have to understand why he said don't do it we just have to know that he's God and he made things and so he knows um, what should be done and what should not be. And so we just follow him as his children and we trust him. We don't try to twist up his word and rework it and say, well, well, hmm, this, this doesn't seem right to me. Our minds are so um, small in comparison to God. In fact, the Bible says that God's foolishness is smarter, is more intelligent. It doesn't say it like that, but that's what it means. In his foolishness, he's more wise than, than men. All men collectively. All of humanity that's ever existed or ever, ever will exist. The collective intelligence of all of humanity. God's foolishness is wiser than that. And so, we don't compare to God. And so we can think up things and think, well, this makes sense to me, that makes sense. But it doesn't matter. As children of God, we need to know God made it all. And God knows it all. And so let's keep reading. I'm going to read 9 and 10. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. So this is... This is Balaam now. He's saying, he told Balak he could only say what God put in his mouth to do. And that's what he's doing right now. So here Balaam expresses a desire also. We heard that. To receive the reward of the righteous. That's what he wanted. He wanted the reward of the righteous. That's what I was just talking about. We're going to have a reward someday. So Balaam was a wicked man. But he was knowledgeable about spiritual things. Balaam wanted the reward of the righteous and that's what every child of God is going to receive someday this is going to be a great reward that far um, exceeds our expectations or anything we could ever think up in our mind and it will be so exceedingly great that all of the problems of life will just fade away it'd be like nothing because the reward that he'll give us will be so grand so Balaam wanted the, the reward of the righteous but he was wicked, and he refused to turn away from his wicked deeds. So verse 11, And Balak said unto Balaam, What hast thou done unto me? This is what Balak the king is saying now. What hast thou done unto me? I took thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. And so, God will make our enemies bless us. God will do it. God will make our enemies bless us. Whatever it is, even if it is, like I said, um, 
anything. It's hard to believe it sometimes. But there is a blessing in everything. And so as children of God, when we are holding on and trusting in him, there is blessing. There are blessings that will come out of everything because God will do it. He's the one that will turn that situation so that he can get blessings out of it. And so that's why sometimes, you know, even in tragic situations, good can come from it, like maybe changes in the laws or that will affect many people. Or it seems like it was a horrible, tragic event. It was. But God, when people are trusting and calling on him, he can still uh, make it so that blessings come from it. And so. We just continue to trust in God. Everything is not going to be good all the time. But we just have to continue to trust in our God. And so Numbers 25. Now I'm going to go to 25. Uh, 1 to 3. And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people begun to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Okay, so Balaam could not curse Israel. He told Balak that he couldn't. He couldn't do it. Balaam couldn't curse Israel. But the people acted in a way that was wicked and sinful and brought a curse upon themselves. And so the enemy, when we are trusting and holding on to God, the enemy cannot go any further than, than uh, the Lord allows. But Balaam was so sneaky and tricky and so steeped in wickedness that he found a way to still do what a Balak had summoned him to do. And we'll read on and find that out in a second. So let me read Numbers 25, 9 now. Numbers 25, 9. And those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. Those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. This is because they um, did something against God. They brought a curse upon themselves because of what they did. And so they died in the plague. So this was this was what Balak wanted to happen to the people. He was trying to um, bring them to their demise. And so you see that um, Balaam was not able to curse them so that it could come upon them. But they acted in a way that brought a curse upon themselves. And so now let me read Numbers uh, 31. Numbers Let's see, 31 and 16. Numbers 31 and uh, verse 16. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the council. Listen to this. This is how it happened, how they ended up cursing themselves. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. So Balaam's soul, Balaam, his soul was completely wicked and submitted to Satan. So, so that this is what happened. Although he was unable to curse the people on his own, he couldn't do it. Remember, he kept saying that he he was unable to curse the people. In fact, he he and I didn't read this, so I suggest that you read all of the story of Balaam because as you see, I just jumped around to pull out certain points. But he actually spoke blessings over their lives. He blessed the people. But that's not what he really wanted to do. He blessed the people because he had to, at that point, say what the Lord had put in his mouth to say. So Balaam's soul was completely wicked and submitted to Satan. 
so that although he was unable to curse the people on his own, listen to this, Satan revealed dark knowledge to him. And he gave counsel to Balak and those that worked with him to show them how to seduce the children of God and entangle them in wicked behaviors that would result in their own destruction. And so he found a way around it. And that is something, this is a trait of those that are wicked. When they have something in their mind that they want to do, they may not be able to take a straight path to do it, but they do not divert from what it is that they really want to do. And so they'll find, like water, they'll find a way to, to do it. They'll find a way to get to where they are trying to get to. So Balaam was summoned by King Balak to come and uh, curse the children of Israel. He was offered a great reward to do it. He was unable to do it um, straightforward like the king wanted him to do. But he still wanted the reward that the king was offering him which was apparently great wealth and prestige and honor and fame. So he still wanted that. So he figured out, he didn't actually figure it out. The devil revealed dark knowledge to him. So he knew how to get the people to act in a way that will bring a curse upon themselves. And that is the same trick that the devil used from the very beginning in the book of Genesis. When he tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit. And so Balaam was a man who was all about self to the extent that he gave he gave himself over to be used by the devil for gain, promotion, and fame. But Jesus says in John 12, 25, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternity. Well, I do pray that you've enjoyed today's Bible teaching and that your body, soul, and spirit has been refreshed in the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you, lift up his countenance to you, and give you peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God. Patients are beautiful, warm, and welcoming people. They love their children, their families, and their communities. Yet, they are some of the most vulnerable people in the world. For more than 40 years, Haitian Christian Mission has followed God's call to help and empower them, providing food, education, and spiritual teaching. Thousands of lives have been changed. It's a mighty work to behold. Soothing Soulful Songs. Available now on Amazon. Order your copy today.